I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice with Castello Wellness and Adventist Health Partners. And today we're going to talk about preppers or prepping for disaster. And food and water is really all we're going to talk about today. We can discuss things later like batteries and other things. Um, but we want to talk about food and water. That's the first thing that you're going to miss in the event of a disaster. It doesn't have to be zombie apocalypse. It could be a snowstorm. It could be any type of a power outage from a storm. It could be a solar flare. This happened in Canada. It could be like the East Coast where a squirrel got into a transformer box and knocked out the entire East Coast for several days. Uh, very quickly, we're going to find out we don't have gas when we don't have electricity. We don't have running water if it lasts long enough. We don't have a lot of things like the ability to cook and do other things. So we want to have food and water. That's our primary uh, information that we're going to do today. So water is our number one thing. That's what we're going to have happen first is we can only go about two or three days without water. And we want to use as a rule of thumb about one gallon of water per day per person. This is for drinking and this is also for cooking purposes, not for flushing toilets and things like that, but just for consumption of food. So what I would prefer we do is something like this. Uh, bottled water, portable, if you need to get into your car, you can throw cases of water in your car. You're not going to be throwing Hinkley Schmidt bottles in your car. You're not going to be throwing 55 gallon drums of water in your car. Uh, this is the best and most portable and also probably about the cheapest. So this is at Costco, it's about $4 and there is almost five gallons of water. So that's about five days worth of water for one person or my family of five. I figure one case of water for every day and I like to keep about 30 days on hand. Don't forget that your water heater's got 30 or 50 or 60 gallons of water, depending on the size of your water heater. You can use that in an emergency. You can use that for flushing toilets and washing and things like that. If the water supply is contaminated, you need to remember that that water is going to be contaminated as well, so you can't drink it. So you do want to have drinkable water in the form of cases of water just like this. You can buy for about $10 a bladder that goes into your bathtub and you can fill up your bathtub and get about 100 gallons of water in your bathtub. That's provided we have enough time to get that into the bathtub and the water supply still works and it's not contaminated and this is another good cheap way to store water. So we want to again have about a month's worth of water available in the event that a major disaster happens and water supplies are contaminated. Next is food. We want to figure out about 1,500 calories per day per person. That's a good rough estimate. If we're going to be in the summertime, if we're doing physical work to support the house or with moving or walking, we're going to need more calories than that. But 1,500 calories is a good number I like to use. And we don't want to buy the frozen rations and they're expensive and you'll never eat them and they're high in salt. The rule of thumb is you want to buy foods that you're actually going to eat and foods that are inexpensive. So you're not throwing stuff out. Just keep a pantry of some very basic foods. Uh, rice is a good example. This bag of rice is about $20. And I look at the thing. It's got 160 calories per serving. There's 250 servings in this one bag of rice. That's about 40,000 calories. This is 27 days worth of food for one person. That's a month of food. Um, you're not going to eat rice every day, but that's a very cheap, easy food source. We want to look at something that we don't want to get, and that's fruits and vegetables that are perishable or vegetables. This big box of vegetables has uh, 42 servings, 20 calories per serving. That's 800 calories. This is one half day of food. So here's 27 days of food. Here's a half a day of food. Obviously, storage purposes and portability. Um, you're going to want to stick with the higher calorie foods. Oil. Oil is great. If you're going to be making rice or beans or other things, you can throw a couple tablespoons of oil in it for flavor as well as just nutrient purposes. This five-gallon container of oil has 90, 130 calories per serving. It's got 1,134 servings for a grand total of 147,000 calories in this container. This is 98 days worth of calories. So if you're making rice and oil and beans, you've got quite a lot of a food storage in a very small space. Other things that I like are things that we actually eat in the house and my little guy is a goldfish fan so I've always got several of these on hand because he's not going to eat rice and he's not going to eat green beans and he's not going to eat some of the other things. He's going to live on cashews and goldfish. Uh, this little box here has got 140 calories per serving, 55 servings, that's about 7,700 calories. That's five days worth of energy for one person in a box of goldfish and it's a fun portable snack. 
cashews. Any type of nuts are great because they're dense in nutrients, um, easy to eat, they don't spoil, you don't have to cook them, and they're good on the run. Uh, this container's got 160 calories per serving. Uh, I'm sorry, 160 calories per servings. There's 40 servings, 6,400 calories. This is four days worth of food right there in that little box. Uh, beans are good. If you're going to get beans, they're a great protein source. They're a good nutrient. Get the canned beans. I really don't think you're going to be buying uh, dried beans and soaking them for three days and then preparing them in a disaster. You're going to want stuff that you can open the can and eat it. Uh, this has got 110 calories per serving. There's 24 servings in this little container, about 2,600 calories. This is two days worth of food, so very easy. Put some beans and some rice and a little bit of oil, and you got a pretty good meal there. If you want to throw your green beans in there for flavor, you can do that. Peanut butter, another good source. You're not going to have bread for more than a couple of days, but you can eat spoons of peanut butter. A uh, regular size can of peanut butter, 190 calories, uh, 42 servings, about 7,900 calories total. There's five days worth of energy right there as well. Uh, lastly, plasticware, paper plates, forks. You're not going to be using your dishwasher. You're going to run out of spoons and knives pretty quick. So you want to have disposable plates and disposable uh, napkins and paper towels and stuff so you can use them and just throw them away or throw them in the car if you're on the run. You need to figure out what you're going to do to cook. So some of this stuff, water obviously you don't have to cook, and cashews and nuts you don't have to cook, but if you're going to be making rice, you can soak it and make rice water, rice milk with it, but you're going to want to have a fuel source, and we can do something very simple. Now I've got a um, turkey fryer that I bought a few years ago. I don't use it to fry turkeys, but it's got a nice burner on the bottom and a propane tank, so I can throw a pan on there if I want to boil water. I can cook on that. Uh, that's portable as well. Uh, I would recommend probably three propane tanks, the 20-pound propane tanks. You'll get hours and hours of cooking with that. You can use that for heat as well. So number one is water. You need to have a gallon a day. You need to have water that did not come from your municipal source because if it is contaminated, if that's the disaster, you can't get water from the tap and you're going to get thirsty pretty quick. You're going to want to have foods, and you can do the math that I just did, multiply the calories times the number of servings and divide it by 1,500, and you can look at that and say that's 40 days, and look at that and say that's 98 days, and look at that and say that's 5 days, and you can add up what you got in the pantry at any one time and decide how many days food you have for the family. Uh, you do have to remember if you've got family like mine, they're going to be showing up at my house as well. Their disaster plan is to show up at my house, so we like to overestimate a little bit when you have unintended guests. Uh, we did not talk about today, but we can talk about um, other things like how to light your house, how to heat your house, um, safety. You probably want to have something to protect yourself because when things go bad, people are going to be showing up at your door taking your supplies that they did not do themselves. So disaster preparedness, it can be two to three days, it can be up to a month in a case like a hurricane, in a major natural disaster, in an earthquake, anything that interrupts your power supply is going to take away your gasoline and the inability to leave. It's going to take away your ability to heat. It's going to take away your electricity. And in a major disaster, it will take away your water supply. So be prepared, be safe, be practical. Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.